All right, what is up traders? What's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. I've got some stuff that I want to share with you guys. Okay, now this may seem like common sense, but the biggest companies have very strong earnings growth. And we're actually going to take a look at a comparison between 2020 and where they're at right now. And we'll go over the fact that even if we were to have a 10% miss in 2025 earnings expectations, that would still yield two times the net income dollars in 2025 versus 2020. So, you know, I know everyone's screaming that there's going to be a market crash and everyone is bearish because we are making new all-time highs. You know, February is typically not the best month for tech and we know the market is very tech heavy. So we could see some type of correction along the way, but we need to go over what really matters, right? And not so much just people's opinions of, hey, things are overbought, things are oversold, yada, yada, yada. So we're going to do a good job of that in today's video. We're also going to take a look at some more, um, you know, types of graphs basically showing futures uh, or showing the Fed funds futures uh, and how they kind of relate to forward earnings yields. We'll take a look at some economic activity gauges, financial condition gauges, and then we'll take a look at consumer activity and industrial activity gauges as well. So it's going to be a nice quick video. Uh, I've got so much data that I want to put out to you guys. So I, it's going to come in the format of a few videos. Um, this is going to be a really good one to start kicking things off. And I've got some really great ones coming up here very soon as well. So you want to make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel so you guys don't miss the rest of those videos. Now, we're also going to go over uh, some potential plays right now. Um, you know, these are basically just a ton of stocks that are still beaten up tremendously. All right. And we'll go over this list uh, and kind of give you guys some different ideas of something to look at. If you're someone who's going off a valuation basis and saying that stocks are overvalued uh, fundamentally on a P.E. ratio or something like that, you know, then here's a nice little list of names potentially that you guys could look at. As always, though, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So be sure to read through the disclaimer. And if you're new to the channel, I actually started a completely free newsletter called Investment Intelligence, giving out free, valuable finance content, free trade ideas. These are what the trade ideas will look like, okay, highlighting the conditions on the chart. I'll show you guys the actual chart itself so you can understand, you know, not only what it is that we're looking at, but get a nice little explanation. And you can take a look at many of the previous newsletter trades, and they've worked out very very, very well. Uh, RTX was one of the most recent ones. You can see people in the Discord, they're actually hitting me up saying that their call options went up over 88%. I uh, wrote about RTX December 28th. You guys have seen that really big move that RTX has had here recently. PayPal was the most recent newsletter uh, trade idea, and PayPal is doing very well also, right? You can take a look. Uh, a lot of the PayPal plays are up. You know, some of them are up 100%, some of them are up 70 60%. Um, you know, Pfizer, these are all profit screenshots from the Discord, guys. You can actually join the Investment Intelligence Discord for just a dollar right now, okay? Promo code JAN24, really just trying to celebrate the new year, kick things off strong with you guys. And you can get in there for just a dollar, right? So there's a completely free newsletter with free trade ideas or access to all the different trade ideas, all the different analysis, as well as many other resources. Well, you can do that by joining uh, the Discord, right? Promo code JAN24 will get you guys in for just a dollar. Right um, now, let's go ahead and start here. And we talked about how the biggest companies have strong earnings growth. So, you know, if we take a look right here in 2020, the total slash median net income in dollars, and this is in billions, was 381. Okay. Now, 2023, 631. 2024 expectations, 713. And 2025 expectations are 796. This is absolutely just, I mean, this is crazy, guys. This is so much money these companies are making. And people just wonder why, you know, the Magnificent Seven, they say, or really, you know, the top 20 stocks in the market really control the influence and the direction of the market. It's because these companies, you know, are very, very successful, right? And, you know, this is where a lot of investors see a lot of potential in the success of these companies and potential future success. Right. And it's kind of just that simple. I mean, some of these stocks in here, they're bigger than the whole IWM market cap. Right. They're bigger than the whole Russell 2000 market cap. You know, some individual names. If we take a look at EPS growth. Right. The 2023 expectations were at nine percent for 2024. It's at 14 percent. So we're seeing, you know, basically increased earnings expectations, earnings per share growth. Uh, for the year of 2024. And, you know, we'll see if that happens. But as we highlighted, you know, 
a lot of people are looking out further even into the future and they're saying, you know, this stat right here is really great. You know, if, if a 10% miss in the 2025 earnings expectations, that would still yield two times the net income dollars in 2025 versus 2020. And we can start to see, you know, um, when you take a look at this 24 month Fed fund futures to price to forward earnings chart, we're starting to see things trough out here a little bit. Okay. We can see at the end of the year towards November of 2023, that's kind of when we started a bottom and things are starting to uptick again. Now, it's not a tremendous rally. It's not like some super strong uptrend, but it seems like we're trying to put in a bottom over here. And when you take a look at this chart, the Fed fund futures and the median forward earnings yield, you know, we can see that the median forward earnings yield right here has been going down, um, you know, largely due to the Fed fund futures, right? And the Fed funds rate. And so if this is going to start coming down, there is that potential that we could actually start to see this go back up and increase more along with this chart right here, go up a little bit more and, you know, really just see improvements in earnings and forward earnings. Um, this is our economic activity gauge right here on the left. And you can see uh, yet again, you know, we're starting to bottom out here, right? It's not like it started a very strong uptrend now, but you know, once these things start to turn, they don't necessarily roll over as much, right? There was this little period here from like 09 to 2015, 2014, where it was really choppy up, down, up, down, up, down. But for the most part, you can see that this thing is, is, is typically tends to go in favor of a trend, right? Once it starts to curl over, we typically start to get a little bit of a trend there, right? And over here, we curl over, get a nice little trend, curl over here, get a nice little trend. And we're seeing the same thing when you take a look at um, the proprietary financial conditions gauge, right? And we take a look here and it's curled up, right? So, you know, we're seeing improvements in the financial conditions, we're seeing improvements in the economic activity, um, you know, through these two different gauges. And this is another thing that's got bulls bulled up, right? This has got people bullish in the market, and that's potentially driving things to all-time highs. Now, it's all it's not all sunshine and roses, all right? When you take a look at consumer activity gauge, we do see that this is rolled over, right? And again, once these things roll over, these typically go down below that zero line, right? We rolled over here, went back down below zero, rolled over here, went back down below zero, rolled over here, went back down below zero. You know, similar to this industrial activity gauge, um, you know, is also rolled over and heading down below zero here. So, you know, again, it's not all sunshine and roses. You know, the consumer is a very big part of GDP. Um, and, you know, the GDP is largely based upon our the U.S. consumer. So, you know, it's not the best sign in the world. And it could be a sign of potential, you know, bad things to come. But, you know, one or two bearish things, right, versus many other bullish things, right, uh, it, it shouldn't change your outlook on things, right? Yeah, you want to be aware of it, but in my opinion, the most important things that you really want to pay attention to um, is really going to be unemployment and the labor market, all right? Uh, because, you know, inflation can go a little bit hot, right? The consumer can weaken a little bit, but as long as people still have jobs and as long as people are still able to get jobs, it's very hard to have that real recession, right? That a lot of the bears are talking about that's going to cause a 20, 30, 40, 50% crash in the stock market. So not only do you want to pay attention to the unemployment rate, but I did an amazing video here recently going over the yield curve, right? And how that is typically the signal for when the Fed is going to cut rates. Historically, we've seen many times in the past that when the Fed cuts rates, it's usually when the yield curve is uninverted and is re-steepened back above zero. Now, we're not there right now. We've got a little bit of ways to go to get there. But typically, once that happens and the yield curve gets back above zero and is no longer inverted, shortly after is when we start to see the Fed cut rates. And shortly after is when we typically start to see um, you know, some significant downside in the stock market. Now, um, you know, based on my gauge, it's at least going to take another six months for the yield curve to uninvert. Uh, and it could be anywhere from six to 18 months before we really see, um, you know, the Fed start to, you know, aggressively cut rates, right? We might, we may see a couple rate cuts, okay, maybe one or two uh, within the next, you know, year or so. But I don't really think we're going to see this super aggressive rate cutting uh, that everyone thinks we are. Um, you know, the market kind of has priced in six to seven rate cuts. And I think that's a little bit too much, right? The economy seems a little too strong at the moment. 
And, you know, if things are looking fine in the economy, they're not necessarily going to rapidly cut rates, right? They may start decreasing them a little bit, may start easing monetary policy a little bit, but they're not going to really cut rates until something is really broken in the economy. Uh, and that's when they're going to do it at a fast pace. And if something's broken in the economy, well, the stock market's forward looking and it's going to be trying to price in, um, you know, uh, that that bad forward looking outlook. Now, we talked about some individual names here, okay? And, and we mentioned that there's some you can look at. These are the percent off of the all-time highs. Now, this is a little bit dated, okay? This chart is a couple weeks old, um, but it's still very relevant, okay? We're looking at stocks down 90, 80, 30% 30 down from their highs. Now, Intel is one of them, okay? Now, Intel's been rallying here. It's got earnings very, very soon, um, but that stock was just not long ago down 37% from its highs. Right. You take a look at something like PayPal. Right. PayPal is one that, you know, I have a pretty bullish outlook on uh, for 2024. And the reason being is because there's simply no expectations. Right. Um, and it's just that simple. Right. The the stock is is pretty much pricing in no type of positivity when it comes to earnings, no type of growth, anything at all. And so I've written about PayPal twice in the newsletter now. And just recently, within the past week or two, we actually had the CEO come out saying is unveiling something, you know, that's going to shock the system, right? Shock the world. And so I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen there. You know, I am long PayPal. So I just want to be clear about that, you know, um, from that perspective. Uh, so, you know, of course, do your own research on it. See see if it's something for you guys. Uh, Moderna is something that's been really beaten to a pulp here recently. You've got companies like Illumina, Warner Brothers. There's DoorDash even. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of DoorDash and things like that, but, you know, they do serve a purpose and people still pay those fees regardless of how expensive they are. Uh, but Uber, I think, is the bigger winner there because they have Uber Eats and they have Uber and, you know, they have uh, they're in logistics, too, when it comes to freights and trucking. And, you know, to me, Uber is something that's a little bit more attractive. And maybe that's why the stock price has reflected that versus something like Dash. Uh, but there's lots of companies in here. Right. And you guys can take a screenshot of this, roll through these uh, and take a look, you know, for yourself. Like, hey, are, are some of these companies things that maybe, you know, I think have value and could potentially go higher in the future, could increase earnings, uh, have some type of growth potential in the future? You know, this is just a nice little list for you guys to dig through, look through. You know, there's Cisco on here, Airbnb's on here, too. Um, ON is a semiconductor chip. Um, you know, you've got Splunk on here, Gilead. Uh, there's some other nice ones, you know, Tesla, everybody loves Tesla, maybe not right now, everybody kind of hates Tesla after the past month or so, uh, TTD is in here as well, the trade desk, so, you know, there's lots of names in this little list right here that you guys can dive through, uh, you know, kind of different sectors as well, different industries rather, I would say. So it's not like it's all just one industry, um, but that's going to wrap up today's video. Okay. Just a quick, short, sweet one. I've got some other really good economic data, macro data that I want to present to you guys. Um, and, you know, that's going to be dropping very, very soon, along with a nice detailed analysis of the bond market, treasury yields, and the overall markets in general. So stay tuned for those. Make sure you're subscribed so you catch those. Uh, don't forget to sign up for that newsletter, okay? Completely free. You can get those trade ideas directly to your inbox once or twice a week. You can expect those. Uh, there's also the Discord, right? And you guys can join the Discord. Um, you know, this is a screenshot from a month or two ago. Right. And, you know, there's just so many plays, guys. Chewy has been great. Chewy's back on fire again. All right. We already traded Chewy once. I posted the new analysis and trade ideas on Chewy over the weekend. And Chewy has just been off to the races. Uh, that's a stock that I think has a lot of potential as well in 2024. I mean, they're a really great company. Um, you know, it may not be the best stock ever. Uh, or, you know, the number one pick ever out of everything. But I did just drop a nice Chewy video here recently uh, on the channel. You guys can check that out. And maybe that's something you guys would be interested. In. But don't forget that promo code Jan24 will get you guys into the Discord for just a dollar. Um, you know, I'll be happy to see you guys in there. And if you don't want to sign up for the Discord for a dollar, you know, just simply uh, sign up for the newsletter. Either way, you're going to be provided with value. And I think you'll enjoy them both. So hopefully I will see you in there.